um, good morning to everybody who is joining today our midterm review workshop. And uh, as you know, we have launched the call for proposal preparation for 2015 SAF transport call uh, with the event that was uh, held on the 29th of, no of October. And uh, we started, of course, uh, all the supporting activities that um, the SSR deployment manager has prepared uh, and established to uh, enable you to submit um, in time and with the uh, great um, opportunity to get benefit from the call uh, co-funding. Uh, what is the aim of today's meeting is to, um, to set the scene of what has been done and in particular uh, to report uh, what are the next steps uh, that are important for us to submit jointly uh, our application uh, uh, to INEA. Um, the most important part uh, is the, uh, the indeed the uh, presentation uh, uh, that we are going to, to see together um, is uh, based uh, on uh, on a different uh, on different parts uh, on two different main part. Well, can you give? Yes, and. Um, First of all, of course, I'm welcoming you all, uh, and I'm here together with uh, Nicola Varinsko, which is the Deputy Managing Director of the CESAR Deployment Manager and Director of Technical and Operation. We will both be in charge of presenting you the main topics of today's workshop. Um, the first part of the, of the meeting will be, in fact, dedicated to the uh, presentation of the main output of the first round of uh, implementing projects collection and gathering. Um, following the um, indication of interest uh, that a uh, campaign that was launched before summer, with the, uh, with the launching event of the 29th of October, we started uh, the activities for collecting uh, the draft implementing initiative. And uh, the, the deadline expired on the 16th of November, so we will be able to, sum to uh, summarize with you the main output. Uh, uh, of course, uh, this um, summary um, will, uh, it is also the starting point uh, for the next steps that we have to face together. Um, in particular, what are the um, important steps? First of all, the clustering of the expected uh, uh, of, the, of the IP templates uh, in coherent uh, action application that will be submitted to INEA and also some indication on the type of organization we want to set up uh, for the coordination of the next uh, actions. Uh, then we will introduce you in the cost effectiveness assessment of the projects that we received uh, and uh, to the detailed roadmap for the next steps, uh, which is being tailored according to the recent evolution in terms also on the numbers of projects uh, that we have received with the first round. Uh, this part will be presented by Nicola Barinsko uh, with the, the following one, which is based in particular to the submission, uh, um, to the submission documents, so part A, part B, C, and D, um, uh, will be, light, will be uh, introduced by myself in particular on the basis of some instruction on how to read the guidelines that we have already issued and that are presenting all the details uh, concerning uh, the type of document uh, and supporting document, forms and supporting documents that has to be provided uh, by all the implementing uh, uh, partners uh, uh, candidate to submit a project proposal to INEA. Uh, then we have uh, uh, half an hour of uh, live online question and answer. And, uh, um, and then we will close our live session and we give you also another hour to submit additional question that refers, of course, to the main items we are discussing today together. So I will give the floor to Nicola Barisco to introduce the implementation projects we received and key figures and overall feedback. Thank you, Paula. Good morning to everybody all over Europe. Strange feeling to talk in a very small room here in Brussels and to be followed by, I was told, about 100 people um, following us this morning on the web. So thank you for being with us. And indeed, as announced by Paula, I will start with a short briefing on how many candidate implementation projects we have received um, in this first loop of interaction between the deployment manager 
and the implementing partners. Here on this first slide, you can see some key figures dealing with the number of projects. So we have received 297 candidate projects, which are for 88 persons coming from civil stakeholders, but with an, a significant share of 12% of projects coming from the military stakeholders. When we look at the overall budget, we are talking about more than 2.5 billion of total investments. So it's a clear evidence that after the success of the call 2014, the call 2015 is showing even greater readiness and maturity for a quick CESAR implementation. And <coughs> by itself, it's a very positive signal. When we look at uh, which call these projects are targeting, uh, you can see that the vast majority, almost 90%, is about uh, the general call. So if you cross this percentage with the overall budget I just mentioned, it's easy to deduct that we are significantly overbooking the general call. At the same time, we have some projects, not a lot, but some, which are either for the cohesion call or to be split into twin proposals, to reuse the wording of the commission yesterday, uh, twins proposal to be uh, shared uh, in between the two calls, um, but nevertheless um, clearly cross-referenced in order to provide for a joint evaluation. So um, the counterpart of what I just mentioned before is that whereas we significantly overbook the general call, at least for time being, we tend to underbook uh, uh, the cohesion call. The next slide provides for the same total figure of 297 projects, their distribution per stakeholder category. Um, not surprised that um, the NSP's projects represent, again, the majority, quickly uh, followed by the airport's operators, uh, because, again, we are talking about pilot common project implementation, which is mainly about uh, ground implementation. Nevertheless, we have so 37 projects coming from airspace users, and as already mentioned, 35 coming from military authorities at large, which could include, again, NSPs, airports, airspace users. We have projects by the network manager, and what I would like to stress is that we also have projects from the industry provider, 17 of them. Eurocontrol has already also joined with 11 projects, and we have five projects from the med service providers. So it's very interesting to look at this distribution because it shows that all the parts of ATM industry are moving forward. It's not only some part of it, it's a, a global movement that as deployment manager, we have to coordinate uh, in an optimum manner and take best advantage of this call. Also interesting to have a look at how the candidate implementations project are distributed per ATM functionalities. And again, you can see that all the parts of the pilot common project are moving forwards with quite a good distribution of projects per AF um, and uh, a start, if I can say, for AF6 because I recall that in the previous call, 2014, of all the projects we have received. And I really want to thank you all for participating into this first loop of interaction. We are very much aware that the timing was very demanding. Um, you have provided all these candidate implementations projects in something like a week, maximum 10 days after the launch of the call. And this is highly appreciated. It has also been a very huge workload and a real challenge from our side to feed back to you in the, um, in the time uh, that we agreed, we presented to you at the sneak preview end of October. But nevertheless, we have been able to provide you with um, individual feedback uh, over the last weekend. And of course, we are looking for the update you will be able to deliver later to us based on this feedback. Of course, here I will not come back to every detail and individual feedback, but I would like to share with you um, the main feedbacks, uh, a kind of transversal feedback that um, we have um, highlighted 
Um, and I guess part of this feedback has been translated into the individual feedback you have received. Before going into the key points, I recall what I already mentioned before, the context. It is clear that we have a general call which is significantly overbooked, meaning that we have to be prepared that this call will be highly selective. And in a highly selective context, it is very important in particular that alignment with deployment program and relevance to PCP is perfectly addressed. Let's make it clear. At the same time, I mentioned already, but it's good to repeat, cohesion call for time being is underbooked and of course uh, DM is at work to trigger some more candidate projects and make sure that here also we are in position to optimize and make best use of the budget available. So now in terms of main feedback, uh, our first point as deployment manager, it's to make sure that every candidate project is well within our scope. And again, our scope is a pilot common project, which in the call means the common projects category. It's not the other category. So of course, what I'm going to say now is only for common projects category under general and cohesion calls. Also, uh, being the uh, author of the deployment program, we are well placed to assess and to screen your projects against their relevance and their connection with the deployment program in terms of which family of implementations project you connect with and in terms of gap, meaning which gaps highlighted in DP 2015 you um, close or you contribute to close. When it's not relevant, um, we have requested you to submit your project or part of your project under other category. And the word request is used on purpose because as deployment manager, we are not expected to take any action on what is not PCP relevant. So we want really to um, optimize our workload and to make sure that as deployment manager, we remain focused on PCP implementation and we are not diverted by side or even um, remotely related activities. So the word request is really used here on purpose and will be very strict in the second loop to make sure that we only continue with projects who have demonstrated relevance to PCP and alignment with DP. Second aspect that we uh, carefully checked is the timing. Um, we have some implementations project uh, starting uh, late. So of course we acknowledge the tendency to jump on the uh, only call available for the time being because nobody knows about the future. But at the same time, as deployment manager, one of our key roles is to be able to optimize the sequence. That is to make sure that the most urgent project goes into the next call in order to call after call ensure timely PCP implementation. So with the timing, we are no longer using the word request, we advise. Because of course, as far as your project is PCP relevant, we have no legitimacy to exclude you from the call. Um, and in particular, from the common projects category of the call. We have to take you on board. But of course, as DM, we would like to avoid or to limit unnecessary competition between some projects we consider as a must for this call and some projects that we would rather consider as nice to have into this call if the budget permits, but not a real issue if postponed to the next call. We have detected in particular some long lasting implementations projects. And in this case, our approach is twofold. It's to take it all, but nevertheless to make sure that you refine um, the description of your project so that if there are some budgetary constraints and we can easily predict there will be, at the time of the evaluation, INEA and the Commission could easily um, split your project in between um, what must be awarded into this call and what could be postponed to the next call. So here again, we are talking about advising you 
it remains your decision, but we really advise you to be prepared for project split in case you submit very long and very big projects. It's better to do that than to suffer, um, I would say, a wool negative decision and get the entire project uh, rejected. Um, last bullet is very important as well. Uh, we have detected some projects which are aiming at implementing common service, but strangely, um, not with clear evidence that there are more than one partner into this project. And we consider that by nature, common services make sense when several stakeholders are committed into the same implementation project. So this was another important aspect of our feedback. And of course, last point we already mentioned when we discussed indication of interest, it's to encourage defragmentation. And therefore, when we have detected some complementary, complementary sorry, or very similar implementations project, we have invited you to come uh, or to join together into a single project. So that's, in a nutshell, uh, the main feedback um, or transversal feedback that we have translated into individual feedback to each and every of the 297 projects. Um, as I told you, it has been very challenging time for the DM and for the people working into the DM. I really hope that you will appreciate this feedback. You will take it as an opportunity uh, to improve your proposals, to refine your projects. And of course, we are very much looking forward to the second draft that we expect by the 7th of December. Now, I keep the floor and I move to the next step, which is the second part of this um, midterm review, um, to give you some ideas how we are going to prepare now the proposals, because it's good to talk about each individual project, but at some point in time, as deployment manager, we have to cluster this project. So we are close to 300 projects and we have as deployment manager to cluster them into a limited number of proposals. The need to cluster is not only to reduce the workload of commission and INEA, it's mainly for us to already prepare the execution phase. And of course, through the clusterization, we facilitate uh, later coordination, uh, synchronization, reporting, by all the uh, implementing partners into the same action. So on the basis of the 300 projects, or close to 300 we have already received, we have elaborated first scenario that of course we could revise if needed based on the second loop. But a priori, we are heading towards three actions proposal. Two actions proposals to be submitted under the general call and where the driver would be the project's end date. So one action proposal where we would group all the IPs that would be completed by uh, December 2018. And I mentioned this date as indicative because of course we would like to balance as well as possible between the two actions proposals. And another actions proposal with all the other IPs lasting longer and going beyond December 2018. Under the cohesion call, given again the limited number of before the DM was selected by the commission. Clearly we are no longer in this situation and the DM stands ready to play its full role as action coordinator. I mentioned that the main driver to um, allocate projects in between proposals will be the time and their end date. Now it's clear that under each action proposals will restore the natural clustering per AF. However, um, we are still working on it, but we believe we don't need how so many activities as we have in the SGA for the call 2014. We would like to reduce the number of activities and we would like to have the DM as activity leader all this with the idea to optimize and to reduce all these layers of coordination and management that we have in the SGA 2014. So we are learning from what we signed last week, learning fast because there is not much time to um, translate the result of 2014 into the call 2015. 
but as you can imagine, doing our very best. Another important issue in the, in the preparation of the proposal is how we manage PMO. Um, here, um, in the perspective of the call 2015, we envisage a new approach. Let me first recall that we consider, and this has been confirmed by the Commission also in the call 2014, that PMO, Project Management Office, in implementation level is required. As DM, we need the PMO in the level three as a kind of extension to relay, disseminate, and support our requests, which are stemming from synchronization needs, coordination needs, performance assessment and cost-benefit analysis needs. So the DM is requesting to the implementing partners and to the implementations project. And for that, the DM need local relay into the implementation level, which is provided by the PMO. But PMO is not only in support to the DM, PMO is, and maybe above everything else, support to implementing partners, to help them to manage the complexity of the FP environment. And of course, the PMO is a kind also of a shared resource, which is here to help promote and disseminate the best practice of project management, and step by step brings all the project under the same action to common practice, and if possible, the best one. So being aware of PMO is required, but at the same time being aware that contrary to what happened in the call 2014, for time being, we have not identified any PMO service provider willing to join as a partner. We have to take action as DM to nevertheless protect and ensure PMO service in the future proposals. So for the time being, it will be the DM to describe the PMO activities when we will prepare the proposals, and it will be described as part of FPA coordination. Our plan is then to launch a call, an open call, according to public procurement rules, to subcontract PMO activities after proposals submission. Of course, such an approach has some consequence. Um, contrary to the situation in the call 2014, if we talk a PMO subcontracted, such a PMO has to be 100% funded because it's no longer provided by a partner. So it's clear that, and even if today we cannot <coughs> provide any strong figure about that, but we will have to adjust the coordination fee within a reasonable limit. We have no strong figure to provide you today, but we expect uh, that considering we are talking a call with a much wider scope than in 2014 considering that the PMO would be provided as a result of an open competition. Taking advantage of the experience we gain in the call 2014. Considering also that as DM, next week we will be one year old. So as DM, we are now stronger and we have a robust uh, star tool which has been introduced to you or some of you at least um, a few days ago. And also because in this new configuration, we will further integrate between FPA coordination and PMO. All in all, we consider that we could get PMO service, I would say better value for money, therefore with minimum impact on FPA coordination fee. At least uh, we commit to work into this direction and to keep the impact minimum. And of course, this uh, updated coordination fee, which today is 1%, will have to be agreed with the implementing partners when revising the ICA and the terms of conditions for the purpose of the SGA 2015. Now, I will give the floor for the next two slides to Michel Gorok, who is the head of uh, performance, uh, performance system and he will explain uh, another important aspect of the three actions proposal that we are going to prepare. It is a cost effectiveness analysis. Michel. Oops. Hello, everybody. 
Nice to meet uh, you. Uh, so I'm going to speak about the cost effectiveness analysis. Uh, the cost effectiveness analysis, first, uh, what is the purpose of this uh, exercise? I would say uh, it's really to uh, support uh, the uh, implementation uh, of the PCP as per the uh, regulation first, and especially by its article four, uh, mentioning and uh, the reference and supporting material of the uh, PCP CBA. And the purpose of this cost effectiveness analysis is to ensure uh, that projects are in line with the overall envelope, uh, which is very important to ensure a kind of consistency between what we implement and what uh, are the economic uh, results of what we are going to implement. And basically, uh, we are speaking uh, public uh, funding here, and uh, this money shall serve uh, our goal, which is a high-performing uh, ATM infrastructure in terms of safety, efficiency, and uh, environmentally friendly operations. So uh, I will explain how we'll do that exercise. In fact, uh, uh, this is something that will be done by the SDM, so each project has not to do any uh, cost effectiveness analysis. And uh, it will work uh, like this. So uh, basically, you will have on one side uh, the information we have today in terms of, I would say, basically uh, return on investment uh, linked to the uh, CBA of uh, the PCP per IF, because that will be done by per IF. And on the other side, we will have uh, first the projects with their uh, budget uh, or cost, uh, the, the investment uh, cost and uh, the expected uh, benefits that we have uh, computed according to the DP 2015, meaning according to the gaps. And according to the gap coverage of those projects, you, uh, we will uh, uh, deduct how much the projects are uh, in line with the economic of the overall uh, PCP uh, CBA. We will do that by IF, and if we have issues uh, for certain projects, then we will have to trigger those uh, issues and give transparency on uh, what will, um, what is uh, on the final economic and the, um, uh, I would say, the, the right balance between uh, cost and benefits that we have in the pipe. So this is the uh, cost effectiveness analysis. We have very much uh, little time to do it because uh, it will be uh, very short. And as my presentation will be short, I go on, on the next steps again. And I guess uh, Nicola should come back. Ah, uh, you will do it. Ni okay, so I give the floor to Paola. <coughs> Thank you, Michelle. So the, um, as a closing part of the next step uh, section, I will present you the roadmap uh, that, uh, that is governing all our common process uh, to submit the project proposal, the application to INEA. Um, I am starting, of, of course, as, you, as we have already anticipated to you in the SNIC preview event, uh, the roadmap uh, is divided into threads, uh, one for the technical roadmap and another one for the administrative document provision uh, in order to mirror the different uh, line uh, that are following uh, one to the others uh, for the, uh, for the, feed the uh, provision of information and the feedback uh, by the SDM on the implementing, templ implementing project template that you are submitting. Uh, so there are a uh, few modifications on the technical roadmap. They are trying to, uh, to better uh, position uh, your work uh, in order to provide uh, up, uh, updated uh, implementing project templates and also the time for SDM to assess and, pro and then uh, submit to your attention specific comments and recommendations for the finalization of your uh, description of the implementation project. So, uh, what is uh, uh, what is all about? Uh, um, uh, I'm on the first slide on technical roadmap covering the activities from the 29th of October to the 
23rd of December. That's uh, the first point, of course, is the uh, sneak preview, uh, which has been followed by the deadline on implementing, implementing partners for the provision of the first draft IP template proposal, which was on the 16th of November. Um, on the basis of this information, we started to Mm, uh, to provide to assess a potential uh, clustering of the IPs that has been presented to you by Nicola, and, and again on the basis of this first uh, IP template, we are starting the elaboration of the technical contents of the proposal, which will be reflected in the Part D of the application form, and uh, will be submitted uh, to your attention uh, on the 11th of December. Just following the numbering of the box, uh, um, I'm now at uh, box five, which is uh, the one related to uh, the second uh, draft IP template uh, provision to the SDM. Uh, it was uh, initially uh, foreseen by the 4th of December, but due to the, uh, the, time the slightly postponement of the first deadline, we have also postponed this one. Uh, so you can see on the slide uh, in yellow the box that I've seen a slightly postponement of the deadlines. Um, first of all, uh, you will be uh, you are requested to to submit to our attention on the repository that will be launched on the 3rd of December, your second draft of the IP template. There is a timing by which you have to submit uh, this information, which is a 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Central European time. Why? Because the, the experts that have to elaborate, uh, that have to work on your, the assessment of the project will have really few days to work on that. So, and to provide by the 11th of December, uh, to provide you by the, um, by the, um, to, 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 to the comments from us, sorry, I missed the comments, <laughs> to provide you the, uh, the second uh, round of comments uh, by uh, the 14th of December, which is in uh, box 7. Uh, all the information that are received uh, even for the, uh, from the 7th of December, 6 p.m., uh, will be used for the cost-effectiveness analysis that has been introduced to you by Michel Gorog. So on the 7th, at by 6 p.m., you are requested to upload on the repository all uh, the IP templates, second draft, uh, and you will receive uh, um, the, uh, the information in the comments uh, uh, by DDM. Uh, then uh, the, um, we will uh, submit also to your attention on the 11th of December the first version of the technical part and the budget. And on the very same deadline, which is the 17th of December, uh, you, will, you have to upload on our repository uh, the comments on the technical part and the budget, as well as the final template of your implementing uh, projects. So the key deadline on your side are the 7th December and then the 17th December. Uh, on the basis of the comments you will receive on the 14th of December. Uh, what is then the, uh, the task of the DM? To take on board uh, all the comments that you provide to us on the uh, 17th of December on the technical part and the budget that we have elaborated and to take on board your final IP template uh, to submit to your attention the technical part version 2.0 and the budget version 2.0. It will be done on the 23rd of December. Then um, we are in the second part of the, of, the, um, of the technical roadmap, which is of course taking place in, uh, uh, in January. Uh, taking into consideration the, uh, the, period the unfortunate period or fortunate, depending on the, on the perspective. Of course, uh, we are facing at the end of December with Christmas and New, uh, New Year break. And therefore, to, for uh, to ensure that you have sufficient time uh, to look at the details of the technical proposal and the budget, and in particular, to provide us with important uh, comments uh, content-wise to improve our joint proposal, uh, you will have time up to the 11th of January to upload comments to the technical part uh, version 2.0 and to the budget version 2.0. Um, at the in the parallel, there will be a finalization of the cost effectiveness analysis, which will be performed on the basis of the data included in your final IP template. 
um, on the basis of the comments you will provide by the 11th of January, uh, there will be the elaboration of the uh, version 3.0 of the technical part and budget 3.0 on the 15th of January. Why it, it is so important, this version? Because this version is not for comments, it's for approval. We need to secure the finalization of this information either on technical part and budget, um, budget side to then ensure that uh, we will have sufficient time to get member state endorsement. Then your comment, your approval um, are, have to be provided by the 19th of January. In fact, on the 20th of January, uh, SDM will, uh, send, will provide all of you and member states with, uh, in the member states with an indication of the fact that uh, final information for the member states endorsement is available. This is the 20th of January. Then up to the 10th of February, member states will have time for validating the information and provide us with the, endo the endorsement. And uh, we will, uh, in parallel, upload all the information on the Eaton Tech tool to finalize the uploading of the document. And um, we will target to submit, uh, according to the deadline, the full proposal, uh, including Part A, Part B, C and D, on the 16th of February. This is the technical roadmap uh, where uh, I would like to, to, uh, to bring your attention again uh, to the first deadline that we are facing together, which is the, uh, the next deadline of the 7th of December, for which we need to uh, receive your IP template second draft by 6 p.m. so that we, we, we elaborate the batch of the documents for the expert and the expert can work on the assessment of all the information that you should, of course, elaborate on, basi on the basis of the feedback that has been provided to you uh, with the recent communication. Uh, just let me uh, complement on that. Uh, you have received, of course, uh, individual feedback. In the, uh, in the communication, there were some general feedback, uh, uh, even uh, considering uh, the naming of the file, which are, for us, uh, really important uh, in order to, uh, to process properly the information. So my, uh, my kind request for all of you is to pay attention also to the general feedback so that we will be able to uh, efficiently process all the information. Um, now I go to the second part of the roadmap, which is aligned in timing uh, with the main deadline we have to face uh, for the proposal submission. And the second part is related to the administrative uh, documentation that has to be provided. And um, uh, following the event on the 29th, we have elaborated the guidelines uh, for the proposal elaboration. Uh, I will uh, present a little bit. Um, uh, uh, I will present you afterwards uh, even the guidelines and some details on administrative documentation. However, on the basis of this lunch, uh, you should you uh, should have already start uh, the collection and uh, and the checking of all the documents that have to be provided to the SDM documents that are requested uh, uh, in line with the application form uh, provided by INEA. And, uh, and what is important for us is also to receive uh, the um, overall administrative, financial and technical point of contact, uh, which will be uh, the receivers of all our information and will be contacted in case uh, specific uh, uh, documents or specific uh, information shall be uh, uh, received uh, after or following uh, the assessment of the IP template and the assessment. of uh, gathering uh, the member states approval within the state. Uh, this is uh, a suggestion on our side uh, mm, for those organizations which will participate uh, uh, to the uh, application uh, belonging to the same member states. It could be, uh, it could be uh, an added value to, uh, to select uh, a single entry point to the member state for the presentation of the overall application. This, of course, is a proposal that will be also uh, shall be tested uh, with the member states and their availability uh, to check uh, an overall package uh, uh, with a single entry point or in case they prefer to have all the beneficiary uh, for checking uh, the uh, relevant part of the application. 
uh, the 9th of December is also the date uh, for uh, you to provide us with um, uh, pre-filled uh, forms where requested and the scanned copy of the administrative and legal documents. Why? Because we would like to double check what uh, you are submitting in order to ensure that uh, all the documents are in line with the NEA requirements and uh, therefore match with eligibility criteria. Uh, there will be time uh, up to the 16th of December for us to come back to you uh, to check uh, and to finalize then the documentation according to the requirements. And uh, on the se uh, 17th of December, the we'll uh, we will start the uploading uh, of this document on the Tentec website, um, either administrative and legal documents, and also to set all the uh, list of partners for each of these applications. Um, it's also important on our side to receive uh, the information on the committers uh, with, uh, who are the person in charge within the member states for the validation of the documents and this, shall be, this name shall be um, again uploaded on the Tentec tool. Um, on the 15th of January, uh, we, uh, we will uh, um, have to receive uh, all the originals of, of the administrative documents. Uh, as a matter of fact, the application will be uh, an, uh, um, an electronic submission. However, uh, the um, uh, formal requirements is that a coordinator has at his disposal all the original documents. Uh, and this is written is also by, uh, by call and therefore by the 15th of January you should uh, provide us with the originals of all the documents uh, that are requested for the call submission. Um, again, on the 20th uh, there will be the request for member state endorsement following, of course, the completion of all uh, the TNTEC TNTEC uploading of the applicants for each of the different clusters that will be um, will be identified uh, uh, in order to submit uh, a single application and uh, on the 20 there will be the request for endorsement to be provided by uh, the 10th of, um, of February and again in line with the previous part uh, of the um, of the presentation, uh, there will be the, the the SDM will be in charge of the proposal submission, part A, part B, and part C, and even and technical part D on the 16th of February. So with this slide, uh, I'm closing uh, the part uh, dedicated to the uh, roadmap, and uh, I will enter uh, in the uh, presentation or some uh, more information concerning the administrative documents uh, um, and uh, the overall application forms. Uh, and in particular, I would like to, uh, to give you some indication on how to read the guidelines that we have elaborated. And um, let me just go to the presentation of the, just to give you an overall view um, of the self-proposal responsive stru structure. Uh, as you might know, and uh, again, we have already presented to you at the sneak preview, the overall proposal, each and every application submitted to, the, uh, to INEA uh, for the SEF uh, uh, transport call uh, 2015 shall be composed of uh, four different forms. The part A, which includes the main characteristics of the proposal and includes information on the applicants and the budget of the action. The part B, which complements uh, part A in particular, providing information, additional information on legal status and capacity of the applicants. And the part C, which uh, indeed refers uh, and provides uh, uh, descriptive uh, um, evidence of the compliance of the, of the application with European uh, Union policy and laws. And finally, the part D, which is uh, uh, dedicated to the presentation of the technical content of the action and uh, uh, which is also complemented um, in addition then to the application form part D as it is provided by INEA, it is complemented by uh, all the IP templates which uh, will belong to a single uh, application and they will be attached as an annex to the part D. 
and um, um, as I anticipated, in order to guide you uh, in the uh, filling in of the different uh, form, in particular in providing us the information needed uh, for the proper filling in of the forms, uh, which will be submitted by the SDM as coordinator of the action, uh, we have elaborated uh, a document which is the guidelines for the self-transport call 2015 responses preparation. Um, just to give you uh, a, a view on, uh, on its structure, I hope you have all already opened and uh, carefully read, uh, read the document. However, the document is structured in uh, uh, nine sections plus the tenth one, which is um, including all the annexes. The first uh, section is the introduction and of course is presenting uh, the objective of the document as well as the structure of the, of the paper itself. Uh, there is then uh, a, an introductory section which is, uh, co is covered by the section 2 and, se and section 3. Uh, the first one uh, is describing CESAR deployment manager's context and role and uh, with the second one is providing um, detailed information on the uh, self-transport multi-annual call, in particular on the funding objective 3. Uh, in order to uh, present you some details on the, uh, on the both general call and cohesion call. Uh, then we enter in the core of the, of the guidelines, uh, which is uh, of course mirroring the structure of the application and then it is uh, um, split in four parts uh, covering the four application form, part A, part B, part C and part D. Uh, you will find uh, detailed information on the procedures uh, for the uh, submission of the proposal, uh, including uh, the roadmap in the fifth section, and then uh, all the information concerning the supporting tools that will, uh, uh, will, uh, will uh, support uh, both SDM and you as implementing partners in, preparation in the preparation of the proposal in the section six. Uh, finally, in order to complement uh, your understanding of the overall picture, we have also inserted a description of the European Commission evaluation and selection process uh, and uh, a brief overview of the following steps uh, in case our proposal will be selected and in particular what are the main uh, elements uh, that are at the basis of the SGA finalization and the execution phase. Uh, in order to, uh, to guide you in the, in the next steps, uh, we have also included a list of action, which is, uh, of is providing all the uh, action, uh, uh, including uh, uh, deadline and ownership in a chronological order. And finally, the annexes, uh, where you find uh, all the uh, documents uh, which are mentioned within, uh, within the guidelines, as well as the template to be filled in and provided to the SDM. This is the general presentation of the guidelines and again uh, my suggestion for you all to read all the details of the, of the document. However, just to uh, facilitate uh, uh, your understanding, I will enter in the main uh, section, the section 4, which is uh, created to support you in the, um, in the provision of specific information as requested by NEA. Uh, so the first, uh, the first uh, form and the first part uh, I will uh, provide you with some information on is the uh, proposal response template part A. Uh, this, um, this application form starts uh, with, uh, uh, as all the other section, with a box dedicated on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, an introduction of what, what is the objective of the form uh, and uh, what, I, what are the type of information that have to be uh, used and also um, an information on how it will be uh, produced and in particular, and this is an important element that I would like to stress to you all today, is that is the part A will be uploaded by the SDM, uh, directly by the SDM and not by yourself, but will be uploaded on the basis of the information you will submit to us and will be submitted by all the applicants. So this is uh, an important point because if you don't provide us with information we cannot what is important, uh, it is that uh, on your side uh, you have to provide us of the, um, with uh, the application uh, form A2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 only in case of affiliated entity and the um, A5. Uh, in order 
uh, to uh, understand uh, what are the information to be provided, uh, you have first of all to position your organization in one of the nine categories uh, that are listed in the uh, application form 2.1. Because on the basis of the choice, this choice, then uh, there will be uh, depending uh, a supporting document to be provided. And, and on the basis of this information, some forms shall be provided. So uh, the nine categories are member states, neighboring country and third country, public sector undertaking or body established in the EU, uh, European Union, private undertaking or body established uh, in the European Union, public sector undertaking or bodies uh, and private sector undertaking or bodies outside you, international organization, European Economic Eastern Interest Grouping, and joint undertaking. Again, um, all the documents that are listed in, the, in particular in Part B uh, vary according to the category that it is selected by each of the, the applicant. And therefore, this is a fundamental information for you. And uh, what is the Part B? As I introduced before, the Part B is complementing the information provided uh, in the Part A for each of the uh, applicants. Um, each applicant, in fact, uh, according to the different categories, that has to, has to provide uh, specific information. The first form that has to be provided by each of the applicants is the legal entity form. There are two different forms available online. Uh, the, links, uh, the link is in the guidelines. And uh, within, the, uh, within the guidelines, and as well as also on the form, uh, there is the full list of the supporting document that has to be provided according to the type of the legal entity and the form selected. Uh, the form shall be si dated, signed uh, by the legal representative and, uh, and uh, provided with the stamp and provided to the SDM. Uh, the section two uh, refers to the ground of exclusion. As a matter of fact, within the call, uh, there are different criteria uh, that are considered uh, as uh, exclusion criteria uh, by INEA. Therefore, we need to provide declaration that uh, all the ap uh, each applicant is not falling under any of the exclusion criteria. And these documents are the Annex B1 and in case of affiliate identity, Annex B2. There are two separate declarations of owner. The first one shall be provided in case for each by each applicant, the second one by the, the affiliate identity. Then we are in section three, the financial identification form that has to be provided by each of the applicants, duly filled in and signed and uh, signed by the bank uh, owner and by the bank itself uh, or either providing uh, a recent uh, abstract of the bank account. Yeah, all the information are included in the guidelines and in the financial identification form itself. And again, the financial identification form is, um, is available online and the link, uh, it is included in the, uh, in the guideline. Then we enter in the section four, which uh, refers to requirements on uh, uh, financial and operational capacity. As I mentioned in the previous, uh, on commenting the previous slide, uh, depending on the type of the organization, um, you are requested to provide specific information. And this is important in particular for those organizations which fall under category four, five, six, and nine private undertaking uh, body uh, undertaking or body established in the European Union, public sector and private sector undertaking or body established outside the Union and joint undertaking. In this case, uh, all these categories have to uh, fill in online the financial capacity check and provide information uh, which describe their operational capacity. So their ability, competencies, uh, skills and experience uh, which provide evidence of the fact that they will be able to perform all the activities which are included in the implementation initiative. And then uh, there is the final uh, section, which is the section five, covering the requirements uh, for applicants that are neighboring or third countries. And these are specified uh, within uh, the section five and it shall be included with Annex B3 and Annex B4. And uh, now we enter in the, um, in the document, uh, which is the part C, 
uh, this application this application form the part c has to be provided only for the section which are relevant uh, to the atm so no of the section that are relevant to railways or um, or, or water framework um, and uh, shall be uh, provided uh, filled in in all the section by each of the applicants uh, with reference uh, with the different imple implementing uh, projects uh, um, which uh, uh, it who, uh, which each uh, um, applica applicants is providing to the SDM. Uh, all the information uh, are covering uh, in uh, chapter one the compliance with union law on environmental protection. Uh, so, uh, section one uh, is providing consistency information on consistency of the project with environmental policy, and uh, description must be inserted here to show how the action, uh, in this case the implementing project, takes into account the environmental policy objective. And section two, uh, when this, of course, uh, the overall like, chapter one is applicable, uh, shall provide uh, information on the development consent uh, and explain whether development consent has already been given to the proposed uh, implementation initiative. Uh, the section three um, uh, refers to the application of the directive uh, um, uh, uh, 2011 92 EU on environmental impact assessment. The section four on the application of the strategic environmental assessment directive. So in case uh, your uh, implementation initiative are um, uh, and uh, fill, fall in the, the applicability of one of these two di uh, directives, then you have to fill in the relevant section providing us with the information. Uh, what will be the role of the SDM? Uh, it will be to collect all the information provided by all the applicants and group them according to the different sections so to have just a single part C for the overall action and where the information provided by the implementing project, uh, um, where the, there are information provided by the implementing project, there will be clearly uh, mentioned and reported within the overall part C. The, the last two sections are section 5, impact uh, of the action on Natura 2000 sites. Again, uh, following the application of the Council Directive, uh, which is mentioned within the application form, uh, and uh, section 6, uh, which is an action uh, refers to um, information that has to be provided in case your implementation project has a potential impact on water. So the main uh, um, uh, philosophy behind uh, the part, uh, the application form part C is that uh, each of the applicants shall submit to the SDM one overall part C um, uh, form uh, with reference to each uh, to all the implementing project uh, this specific organization is candidating to the SDM and uh, the SDM will extract all the information provided by all the um, implementing partners and will then compose a single application form for the overall action. Of course this will be done for all the three clusters at this stage, uh, this is the number that we expect, uh, the three cluster proposal that uh, we will submit on the 16th of February. Then the last, uh, uh, the last, uh, mm, uh, the last uh, slide uh, is on uh, uh, the, um, the section D. Uh, as we have already announced at, uh, at the time of the uh, sneak preview, uh, this is the mm, part dedicated to the technical content of the action. And uh, um, as a matter of fact, uh, will be all information that you are um, uh, presenting to us. And uh, you are presenting to us on the um, that uh, you are elaborating on the basis of any comments and recommendation uh, submitted to your attention by the SDM. Um, in particular, the application form Part D will be elaborated directly by the SDM and, uh, and uh, it will be populated in the different section that compose the Part D. Again, uh, on, on the basis of the information and with reference uh, to the implementation project uh, that are submitted uh, by all the applicants. Uh, in particular, the first section of the Part D presents the general description of the which has been uh, presented to European Commission um, and uh, you all as a, um, have as a reference uh, for the elaboration of the project. 
then we will enter in the description of the action. And the description of the action will be then presenting the specific objective of the action itself. It will present the main uh, characteristics of the action, so duration, structure, uh, including the word breakdown structure, presentation of the different activities, and uh, presentation of all the implementing projects belonging to the implementation activities. Of course, it will mirror uh, the structure of the deployment program and the grouping uh, the, um, uh, the implementing project uh, per single AF. Um, within this action two, we will have all the description of deliverable and milestone associated to the different action. And uh, uh, therefore, this action two is the core of the description of the technical content. And again, uh, will be uh, will be um, elaborated, uh, extracting information from the IP template, uh, uh, because the IP template will be attached as an annex uh, in section seven of the Part D. The following uh, four sections are dedicated to mm, to uh, present uh, uh, transversal elements of the action itself. First of all, uh, to provide evidence of the fact that the action and all the implementing initiatives which are grouped within the action, within the cluster, uh, contribute to the overall objective of uh, TNT policies and connecting Europe facility policy and uh, therefore are in line with the European Union uh, um, general policy on transport and specific policy on, uh, on ATM and it also providing uh, information on the European dimension of our application. The section 4 on, uh, mm, address in particular uh, maturity of the action uh, and of the implementing initiative uh, and uh, which are within included within the action itself. Maturity it is uh, uh, to be considered at different layers. It's uh, technical maturity as well as administrative and governance maturity either of the action and of the um, or the single implementing initiative. Then uh, there will be a section dedicated to the impact uh, of the action towards environment, towards different policy, uh, job creation, economic development, uh, so transversal uh, appraisal of the action and benefits that the action can produce towards European Union. And the final section is addressing the points on quality. Uh, it, is, it will present a uh, coordination layer, PMO, communication uh, uh, policy and communication plan, as well as dissemination policy. Altogether, uh, the seven, sec seven sections will form the application form Part D. The application form Part D complemented, with, mm, complemented by all the annexes, therefore to by all the implementing projects, uh, will be uploaded together uh, with the, the other forms Part A, Part B and Part C on the ETN Tech tool by the 16th of February in order to meet the deadlines with the European Union. So I, mm, I hope to have uh, given to you some infor relevant information concerning how we, we are, what we are expecting from you to, um, to complement all the information. Then I want to, to provide you a more specific view on how, on how to present uh, and to provide us with this information. As you know, the first round, we have announced uh, on the sneak preview the uh, repository for uploading information. It was not ready for the first round of IP template uh, uh, draft provision, which uh, you have sent directly to us at the um, uh, self-called 2015 uh, dot, um, at uh, dot EU address. Uh, but uh, from the 3rd of December onwards, the uh, repository for the call will be online and will be accessible, accessible to all, uh, your point of contact. Uh, as we have announced, uh, the repository is structured in two separate sections. The first one is a public section, which is including all the relevant documents call documents, uh, guidelines, uh, roadmap, and also uh, question and answer with our, uh, which are, of course, uh, the way we are directly uh, interacting with you on specific items and specific clarification. 
there is then a second part, uh, which is the restricted part, uh, where there will be access uh, for each implementing partners uh, involved in the responses preparation, and where all the information, administrative side, part A, part B, part C, will be uploaded, uh, and where you have the possibility to upload your IP template uh, to receive directly on, uh, on your um, restricted uh, uh, folder the comments by the SDM. And uh, as I mentioned, the repository will be launched on the 3rd of December, so you will have time from the 3rd uh, up to the 7th to upload uh, your IP template according to the feedback uh, received by the SDM. So I, I think that um, besides my closing remark on the, on the general, uh, uh, on the importance of this event, I would like to, first of all, to Thank you all uh, for uh, uh, the, uh, the participation to this mid-term review. Uh, for us, it's important to keep uh, to keep uh, uh, to be in contact with you uh, on a regular basis uh, to provide you feedback on the, the process uh, and the status of the process, uh, and, uh, and also to receive your feedback. Uh, and uh, we are now collecting uh, uh, the question and answer, so to uh, to be able to provide you with specific clarification on the items. That, that has been provided today. I give the floor to Nicola. Thank you. Um, good morning again. Um, I, I'm back to um, not only for closing remarks, in fact, because during Paola's presentation, I was in the ops room checking all the questions which are coming in real time to, to us. And um, Paola will have to check some of them, um, and before Paola comes back uh, to provide precise answers to the administrative one, I have collected some more technical questions that I would like uh, to answer. Well, indeed, they are not so much technical, it's part of them are rather general, but I think it's important to, to share. Um, first one, maybe the most important, it's, it's about the call next year. Um, there is um, there, 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 there are some some questions um, about uh, about whether we will have a call uh, next year in 2016. And um, in the uh, INEA Info Day yesterday, some information has been provided, which has created <coughs> some confusion. As you know, as deployment manager, it is very important for us and for you as well that we have some visibility on the future call. And we have already um, forwarded this consideration to the European Commission, explaining that as deployment manager, one of our key roles is to sequence the projects um, in between the call with uh, the assurance that there will be enough call at the end to make sure that all the projects which are required to fully implement the pilot common project could indeed be awarded at some point in time. So in this direction, um, we shared yesterday even with the Commission again to clarify this point. Of course, today I cannot give any guarantee that there will be a call, but for sure I can say that the possibility is there, that uh, any message saying that there will be no call uh, is not realistic. And this for two reasons. First point, uh, commissions clarified that um, it is mainly for us, deployment manager, uh, implementing partners, to also demonstrate that beyond the result of the call 2014 and now 2015, there is still need for other calls because there is still need for other implementations projects um, to be awarded and then executed. So, of course, uh, I think it is fair for the Commission to expect this uh, justification by the deployment manager, and you can count on us to uh, strongly advocate in favor of future call next year, but also in the following years, because we know that not all the technology in the deployment program and in the PCP are ready for uh, implementation now or even next year. So it is essential that we can smooth PCP implementation into some future calls. So the debate is not even only 2016, it is 2017, 18, and beyond. 
Um, the other point is that um, even if the budget, which was initially three billions uh, earmarked for Cesar, may have been reduced somewhere to 0.5, 2.7. Of course, uh, the technical part and the budget will be provided per each of the cluster, meaning cluster under general call and cluster under cohesion call. Uh, so in case uh, uh, you will not receive any information before that uh, date, your, uh, your uh, IP template will be attached to the, uh, the two applications, one under the general call and the other one under the cohesion call but uh, not later than the following deadline, which is the 15th uh, of January for providing uh, um, comments uh, on, the, uh, on the technical part, then, sorry, not later than the 11th of January, deadline for which you have to upload your comments on technical part and budget, you can inform us on any other modification. So the latest date by which uh, we can receive information uh, from you on your participation participation to one of the two um, uh, call is the 11th of January uh, 2016. Uh, following that, uh, we have to elaborate the version for approval and then we will not be in the position to modify any of the components of the cluster because we will, end, uh, we will, uh, uh, we will wait for the approval from each of the applicants and therefore we cannot modify following the approval. So the very last date for you to provide uh, information on where your application form can be, uh, your IP template can be positioned and are either under self uh, call or under, uh, sorry, general call or under cohesion call is the 11th January. Um, this, this one, uh, good. Mm -hmm. so we, we receive a, a question on, uh, on the, uh, what is the official deadline for submitting part A, part B stamped and signed is the 9th of December or they, or they can be submitted on the 15th of January. So the point is that all the documents filled to be filled in shall be provided by the 9th of uh, December. Then we will, uh, uh, as SDM, validate the document and provide you with feedback. And then you have to provide us with the original by the 15th of January. In the meantime, what we will do with the information, we will start uploading all the information, administrative uh, and financial, uh, on, uh, on the Eat and Tech tool for the three different clusters we are facing right today. There is another one. Okay, yes, uh, we receive another, another question on the cost effectiveness analysis and I give the floor to Nicola to provide further clarification on that. Yes, so I'm back. Sorry for all the switch, but as you can imagine in this uh, Q&A session, we, we adapt in real time to the question that we still continue to, to receive. Um, in my previous intervention, I already clarified about cost effectiveness, but just to make it totally clear and based on one of the questions received, um, Regarding what is the subject of cost effectiveness analysis, it is whatever activity, study, work, uh, and this point is clarified through the INEA guidelines. Uh, but again, I really want to stress that uh, this cost effectiveness analysis at macroscopic level uh, will be provided by the deployment manager uh, in each of the proposals. And through the uh, future interaction, you will, of course, have a chance to review uh, what has been developed by uh, the deployment manager. Um, with this uh, last clarification, and uh, I'm looking around me, but I think now we are about uh, at the end of the question we have received for the time being. I would like to, to put some closing remarks. Um, first one is to confirm that um, the connection will remain open until one o'clock. So you can still continue to uh, submit questions and even if not answered uh, live, uh, they will be collected as usual and answered on our website. Um, I would like to mention also that all the questions we collected in our previous events in relation with the call 2015 
are now available on our website as well. Uh, in particular, um, the, the huge amount of questions that we collected in the, in the sneak preview uh, end of October. Um, before calling and just to, uh, before closing, sorry, and just to summarize uh, what has been uh, again repeated by Paula, um, in the coming days, we <coughs> face two important deadlines. Uh, first one is the deadline of the 7th of November, um, uh, December, sorry, 7th of December. This deadline is uh, to receive your second draft of IP template, but, and I also want to stress that, it's also the deadline beyond which, as DM, we consider will no longer be in position to take uh, new, new IP on board. So it's very important that you are still uh, in a, a process to decide uh, whether, uh, uh, whether you can uh, submit something or with who you would like to submit something. It's very important that you keep this deadline on your radar. And Paula is giving me a signal, an additional precision that it's not any time. The deadline is 7th December by 6 p.m. And I really want to stress that because, um, as you can imagine, it's not to go uh, <laughs> to go back home after 6 p.m. For us, it will be the start of working session. And in the same evening, we will start allocating uh, the second draft to all the experts in DTO, PFS, and FPA in the deployment manager. So it's very important that from 6 p.m. we have everything on board so that we can have a full and fruitful a working session afterwards in the DM. Also to keep in touch, uh, you will continue to receive every Friday uh, the weekly report that we have initialized now uh, two weeks ago. You may have already received uh, issue number two last Friday. Number three is coming this week and this will continue until the end, until the submission of the proposals to the European Commission or to INEA to be correct. And yes, and all the actions, uh, every weekly report is a summary of all the actions performed during the week and the actions for the next week. So you have a kind of a, a weekly head up what's coming next. And it's very important, um, even if very busy, um, to, 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 to pay some minutes uh, to, to read carefully this weekly report which is uh, the, the link between us uh, beyond this type of specific, uh, specific event. And my last point, um, even if um, this format of WebEx uh, was not foreseen for this event, um, okay, we are all aware of the circumstances that um, have driven uh, the change into the format, but I would like to take advantage of this maybe unusual format to get your feedback about how much you consider uh, it is well fitted for the purpose because I have the impression that uh, in a few hours and without any of us traveling around, we have nevertheless been able to share a lot of information. We have been able to receive your question and I hope provide useful answer. So maybe if as a kind of last round of question, instead of question, you can send us remark about how much you like this type of format, this will be for us a very important information on which we can build for future interaction. So Paola is sitting close to me, Michelle as well, the three speakers for today. We would like to thank you. Uh, so there was quite a huge number of people online despite again unusual format. We thank you for sharing this morning with us, even if in the distance. Um, we thank you for all the hard work you're doing in parallel to us. Um, again, we are a team. Uh, we are really working as a team, and you are part of the team. Um, and now uh, we are looking forward to the next step, and the next step I have already mentioned are coming very close. So I say goodbye on behalf of everybody here in the room and the deployment manager, and looking forward for other occasions to talk to all of you. Goodbye.